everyone. I've been wanting to continue on with my stories about going into the visionary state and uh, meeting Billy. Now, um, I've been able to bring this whole story up to the point where I first took an interest in Bill Lieb and I was looking at my videos and, you know, I made that video exactly a year ago today. Now, I realized I have uh, haven't moved forward with that story much since then and uh, part of that is because I wanted to stop and talk about some other things, you know. I figured, heck, you know, while I'm at it, let's go through my photo album and I'll show you my music and stuff. So, um, so you know, uh, my life isn't just all about these visions and it's not just all about Bill, of course. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, um, it, it is kind of a hard topic to, to share, you know. It's a it's a hard conversation for a lot of reasons, and um, and so um, the the first what I like to think of as the first part of my story, I think that's kind of the easy part to tell, you know, the part where um, I didn't know I was in visionary state yet, and um, and I I was pretty sure I always remembered um, meeting Billy, and it just seemed to be like a part of my life. So the major turning point was when I first realized that I might be going into visionary state, and that. Um, that's the only way I knew Billy and that, uh, and so well, with all that stuff, you know, um, so like if you look at that video I did a year ago, or actually I did another one, um, Tactical Neural Implant, more recently to share more about my thoughts there, that, you know, as soon as I got to that point, I would say 30 years ago now, um, I had a lot of doubt, like, um, that, uh, first of all, I didn't think Bill's going to remember me, and he's probably not even going to want anything to do with me anyways, but, um, and so this next section of the story, it's actually very difficult because I think this is more like the, maybe the worst part of the experience, kind of, kind of some of the toughest stuff I've had to deal with in my life, you know, mentally. And uh, so um, it's, uh, so it can also be very emotional for me, you know, very emotional time uh, to, to reflect on. But at the same time, again, um, it's very complex. Like I was saying, it's like very carefully laid out, very tactically uh, laid out, and so I feel like I also want to be very careful in sharing the story so that I don't leave out any important details or get anything out of order, kind of like um, I almost forgot about the time I was going to the nursing home and I saw that old lady, and so there was an old lady in a straight jacket and my grandmother said I might end up like her someday, you know, that type of thing. I almost forgot about that, but that's kind of um, a colorful um, memory or point, you know, <laughs> that comes full circle because I'm like, I can see where that ties in, but it's really hard to say exactly what's causing this, you know, so that's what makes it interesting to me. I think um, uh, the visionary state um, has been around as long as human history, but we're still um, exploring it and understanding how it works, right? So anyway, so um, something that I'm very conscientious about, of course, is uh, bringing Bill Lieb into the conversation. I'm not sure that he likes to be talked about so much. I, so, um, I think what I picked up about him is um, he doesn't really like to let people know a lot of stuff about him to begin with. So um, so as I share the story, you know, I want it to be understood that I've been, you know, slipping off into visionary state. Um, I've kind of been straddling reality and visionary state so much that I wasn't really sure if I had been put in contact with him on so many occasions or seen him around or just, you know, the whole narrative is very confusing. Uh, as it stands. So um, so I don't want to um, to seem disrespectful or, or do anything to misrepresent Bill as a person. That um, This is somebody that I do care about very much. I do have a great deal of love and respect for Bill Lieb and that um, I think that he is a living treasure um, as far as the, the music community goes that I, you know, I definitely, uh, you know, this is somebody that I, uh, I don't know, I would consider him, you know, he could be my favorite guy, you know, I feel like he's just definitely become the center of attention for me, so, anyways, um, anyways, with that being said, there's a few things I want to talk about, so I almost feel like I should make a separate video, just to tell you exactly what I do think about Bill, or what I feel about him, because, um, that's kind of important to know as I move forward, um, kind of what my sense for reality is, you know, what are some of my beliefs, you know, what do I think is going on in, uh, the world, so I want to talk about that in a separate video. So um, on this video though, I felt like it was important to talk about my mental health because what I'm sharing is what I consider to be a crazy making experience. And I just feel that um, 
it's something that could be easily misunderstood. Um, and as it has been, I just feel like, you know, to the casual onlooker, you know, somebody that's stumbling onto me going through the experience you're talking about the experience, it's easy to be like nonsense. It's all just the, you know, crazy stuff. But, um, anyway, so, uh, so I want to talk about the mental health stuff because, um, I feel like, uh, <clears throat> As I've been saying, this is a crazy making experience. So we got to ask yourself, uh, are you crazy? Yes, I'm crazy. Absolutely fucking crazy. Okay. Um, so being crazy isn't so bad after all. Um, in fact, it's something that a lot of people really enjoy in their, um, in their music and entertainment, right? So a lot of our favorite, like, especially like really heavy rock music or really heavy electronic music, you know, like, you know, my little joke about Bill Lieb is that he ain't nothing but a crazy old electronic executioner. And if you listen to his music, I mean, some of it, you know, he gets kind of nuts with it, you know, the way he's singing and everything, you know, but um, the kind of craziness that you see going into this, uh, the, the, the music and everything is actually kind of a controlled crazy. So like, let's say you actually meet Bill Reed and he's a good example, right? You wouldn't think he was crazy, or you, if you didn't know what he did for a living, you'd probably never guess, because he just seems like a nice guy, he just seems really normal. And so, um, similarly, um, we use that kind of controlled crazy in Kung Fu, and so that, uh, that craziness can be a good thing for our creativity, it might even be vital to my survival <laughs> in combat, right? So, but there is bad crazy, there is the kind of crazy where people do crazy things when they're really upset and emotionally off center and so I've definitely been crazy in that way too just by being provoked and reacting you know just it's, it's a kind of crazy when you're frustrated and you know when you're overwhelmed with emotion and your brain is shutting down you know it's like it's, it's shutting your brain down you, you do irrational things that's crazy so I've done that I'm definitely guilty there so um <laughs> as far as that goes um am I crazy so um I, I definitely feel like, uh, you know, people have been treating me like something's wrong with me out of all of my life, you know, so that's where I'm ready to consider that, you know, I could have uh, certain mental conditions that are affecting me and like, uh, <clears throat> like I'm, I'm willing to think my family have known there's something wrong with me all my life, right? But um, the reason I'm not diagnosed is because my father particularly didn't have a whole lot of faith in the mental health industry, and neither do I. However, um, I'm willing to take into consideration now that I know a little bit more about um, autism. Could be a little autistic, you know, um, and some of those traits like uh, autistic people can become really obsessive over something when they get into something. And, um, and, and they like to laugh at stupid shit, that kind of thing, right? So, uh, you know, so I think, um, you know, I, I, I do tend to get obsessive about things, you know, for sure. And, um, like you might notice, you know, I've been obsessing over the visions and I obsess a lot, especially over the coincidences. I have so, so many good coincidences that I love to talk about. Okay. So that's, that's a possibility. Um, brain damage, um. I've been hit in the head really hard on a number of occasions to the extent that um, it, what you call rung my bell, you know, I saw the white light, I heard the ping and the ringing, so I could have multiple concussions. So, um, you know, sometimes when I watch my videos, um, I'm, I'm really embarrassed. I feel like I have such a difficult time talking. I leave words out. I use the wrong words. Um, I, I guess everybody makes mistakes, but I do sometimes wonder if I've got brain damage because I have these brain farts and, and stuff like that. And um, uh, I could be mildly, I hate to say the word, I'm mildly retarded or mildly delayed, but um, that could be why um, I have a hard time putting things together, why it's hard for me to become what you call uh, socially mature. Some people don't believe that I'm as a proper woman or a proper adult, you know, that, uh, <laughs> so I don't know. So we like to think of me as a big kid, you know. Uh, anyways, um, that's, that, that can be the case with mentally delayed people. Um, but of course there's trauma, you know, so we've talked about this before. Um, P 
people with trauma, um, like especially kids, sometimes talk about uh, having an imaginary friend and stuff like that. So anyways, you know, when people have mental disabilities or disabilities in general, a lot of times these people tend to require special counseling. So not just to, um, to understand the condition they have, but to be able to cope with the type of reaction that they get from people around them. So like um, me explaining myself, having to grow up in the Florida Keys, you know, like those kids were really only um, coming from a place of animal instinct. So like, you know, like, so say we have these animals in a pack and there's one that is kind of messed up. So the other animals sense that there's something wrong with it. And so they might you know, attack it or kill it, they might abandon it and, or they just might not uh, mate with it, you know. And so I feel like that's how I'm being treated in some way, like, um, I feel like, uh, <laughs> you know, that I've had to uh, come under attack by people that are, you know, at least mentally abusive, you know, um, and feeling uh, rejected by men, you know, feeling like I'm such an, unde an undesirable person in so many ways, um, that can in itself um, have a very negative effect on your mental wellness, meaning that you don't feel happy with yourself. You could uh, face a great deal of depression because of that very thing, you know? And so um, <clears throat> when it comes to like uh, going into visionary state, that doesn't necessarily serve as a symptom of mental illness. So like, you know, if I were to receive counseling, it would definitely be helpful to stuff like you know identifying my condition and um, and the management of my behavior and this type of thing management of depression so I think that a lot of that stuff's legitimate but when it comes to uh, finding help with the visionary state um, that's where we're dealing with being uh, psychically gifted and sometimes psychically gifted people if they don't know what's going on that can in itself drive them nuts that could drive them crazy so um, so something that Rosie mentioned to me, she knows that that's what I've been going through. And so, you know, I've chosen her to be my counselor ultimately. That's why I'm in Montana, because I really wanted counseling to help cope with the, going to the visionary state. And so she herself has actually been through a lot of counseling. Just, you know, she's had a pretty rough life. Plus, um, uh, she's had a lot of great experience with um, uh paranormal so she knows about visionary state and she's been uh, contacted by extraterrestrials this type of thing you know you might not believe this but um, I see the truth in it and and that's where it kind of helps me understand my uh, situation where I feel like you know I'm going to visionary state um, I'm communicating with um, beings that are working on a different level now um, the problem here is the uh, the false narrative you know why was I um, made to believe that there were things going on that weren't happening because that's what a uh, psychosis is or like you know the false narrative you know coming from some other source that's a lot like schizophrenia so this has all definitely made me have to look at my mental condition and wonder if these are any of my uh my problems you know so I kind of wonder <laughs> to some extent but I just um haven't really gone through the uh the diagnosis or brain scans or anything but you never know anyways um uh <laughs> You would think that I was psychically gifted if all this stuff worked out and let's say, you know, Bill Lee either married me or we just, you know, maybe we just hit it off and stayed friends. You would think, oh, well, she's just psychically gifted. There wouldn't be a problem there, but there seems to be a false narrative here. Um, and, uh, you know, Bill Lee doesn't actually seem to be interested in me at all. And he's already married anyway. So that's where um, this makes me look very delusional. And so... Um, so I want to tell like from, you know, the point where I was 18 when I first uh, thought I might have gone into visionary state where I sort of forgot about it, kind of kept going, but then it all came to a head as I put it. That's where I um, had the vision experience that helped me uh, understand that I've been having visions all my life. So that in itself was a very emotionally devastating uh, revelation to me. Like it's kind of scary to think that, you know, something's happening to you that's out of your control. Like imagine somebody just grabbing you by your clothes and yanking you off of your feet and you not being able to do anything about it, right? It's a helpless feeling. And I feel like, you know, and then, you know, I feel like I was tricked into believing all the stuff that wasn't true. So that in itself, that makes me feel very uh, vulnerable or gullible, you know, like, what the hell? Am I really that stupid, you know? So it really gives a lot of self-doubt, you know? And then um, it's actually very embarrassing, you know? I feel like I have come to admit the 
my feelings for this guy, you know, like, so that was very embarrassing, you know, so of course I got a lot of negative feedback, like, you know, people saying you need to get help, you know, or people trying to tell me this guy's never going to be interested in you. For one thing, you're not even pretty, you know, that type of thing. So all this stuff is very, um, very hard on the soul, you know, and so, um, you know, that's why I got to wonder, you know, why is all this being done to me? Why am I give, being given such a horrible experience? Well, um, when it comes to dealing with, um, you know, something like this, we got to be uh, conscientious about, are we dealing with something that is um, good or bad? You know, are they trying to help me or not? And well, this didn't, sure didn't seem like a whole lot of help, right? It sounded like this was just making my life worse. But now that it's been at least 23 years ago, and, um, you know, things have calmed down a lot, and I've had time to learn about it and to think about it. Um, I really feel like my spirit guides are actually providing me a very valuable education. You know, this is an education that money can't buy. You can't go to college and get this education. So learning through immersion and experience. So um, I like to think now in hindsight, you know, that... Um, you know, I'm also a student of the arts, of music, of the martial arts, um, and of course, due to the circumstances, um, the, the paranormal and psychic awareness, this has all been part of my, the study of my life. So, you know, I feel that my, my guiding beings are helping to answer a lot of my questions and make me aware of the things that I need to learn. So, um, so it's kind of like being a jujitsu student and being put on the bottom and learning how to survive um, somebody being on top, you know, um, it's a very uncomfortable and probably the worst case scenario. But at the end of the day, I feel like it reveals to me that, um, I have more mental strength than I thought I had to begin with, you know? So, um, now I feel like it's helped to replace some of that self doubt because I think that, um, most average people, if they were dragged through a similar, uh, scenario where, uh, they were put through visionary state, maybe it was tailored to their taste, you know? And they were brought to this point where they realized they were tricked so badly. <laughs> I think that would ruin a lot of people's lives for sure. You know, that could easily um, end a lot of people's lives with suicide or have a lot of people end up in custody, this type of thing. So that's where I kind of think um, I'm probably uh, have a lot more mental strength than uh, we'd like to think. And uh, that, you know, I'm just living in a, um, you know, a life that is unique to where like, you know, everybody has their thing. And this just isn't everybody's thing, you know, there's so there's only so many people out here that are going to appreciate this conversation. So otherwise, I've just had these other type of people that are like, you know, you need to stop obsessing over believing you're delusional. You're imagining this. This is just a fantasy. You need to see a professional you know, you need professional help, this type of language. You know, to me, that sounds like they're just going, shame on you, Jody. You should know better than this. What's wrong with you? So these kind of people aren't really helping. They're, that's the worst part of this whole experience, actually, is having people talking to me like this. That's what's been killing me the most, right? So, um, so i got to forgive all that because a lot of these people really don't know what they're talking about. But they're just really upset, you know, because if it was them, you know, <laughs> or whatever, you know, just, you know, people can't believe what I'm talking about. So there's really only so many people who've been helpful to me, like Rosie, for example. That's the whole reason I'm in Montana. She was like the only few person I knew that could really help me. And so we needed each other. I think it was a valuable um, trip coming to Montana and maybe one of the best choices I've made. So um, with that being said, um, then there's also Master Takes. I was going to say, I'm really glad I came to Montana. I think maybe there was that was the hidden gift inside, you know. Um, so anyways, um, I, I got a hold of my Kung Fu teacher, Master Tay, and when I told him about it, he was also helpful to me. He said, you know, he understands. He's had the same thing. So, you know, talking to these, uh, the people who who have been through it, those have been the best people to help me. So I, I want to try to forgive everybody that's yelled at me and all this stuff. So I'm not really sure exactly what Bill Lieb's understanding has been, but I've shared as much as I can with him and he knows how I feel about um, this whole thing and, and how much I care about him and all that good stuff. So, um, but you know, I really have to be thankful to Bill, you know, because of all the people, he's never yelled at me, chewed me out and all this stuff. I've never gotten any grief out of Bill Lieb, you know, so um, I appreciate that. And uh, 
you know, the only thing he's really had to say is that, you know, um, when it comes to like the unknown, that can be really interesting, you know, this could be very mysterious. So I don't think he, um, I feel like he's not necessarily, like, I'm not really sure if he doesn't have anything to say or if he's just not at liberty. So there's still, you know, some frustration where like, I feel like he's been giving me peace of mind by telling me, hey, you know what, Jody, I don't have a problem with you. In fact, I appreciate hearing from you. You're welcome to write me. You're welcome to call me, you know, just, but don't expect much because he's a busy guy, you know, he doesn't answer the phone much, but, you know, there's been a couple of times that I've heard back from Bill and, um, and he leaves me in a good mood. I felt like, okay, you know, that made me feel like I'm not doing anything wrong. I feel like I'm welcome. And, um, I almost feel like, um, maybe I've grown on him a little bit. I feel like he sincerely cares if I'm doing okay or not. Um, so he left me feeling pretty positive so he that's been a big help you know so I feel like a lot of things have been going good for my mental health lately you know like um the jobs I'm working at it's working out real well my plans are coming together but you know I'm still a little bit dissatisfied like you know um I feel like I still hope to get through to Bill Lieb a little more and um well I've always wanted to make music and all that stuff but I feel like it does motivate me like I really hope that I get some work done um uh, while he's still alive and um more than anything, it's just for the sake of sharing. I just think that since it's been so, such a big part of my life, I really hope to uh, to share any of my work with them or any of that. And uh, anyways, um, I <laughs> I just like to say, um, you know, this has been a crazy making experience at the time, but I think nowadays um, that I think I've got a lot of that under control. I don't think it's fair to say that I'm mentally ill or anything like that. You know, I think that. Um, I'm definitely crazy, but, um, you know, I think that I'm safe and I'm responsible and that, um, that I'm keeping the people around me safe and that the, the, the place I'm working for, they gave me a raise because I'm doing a good professional job. So, you know, I'm nothing wrong with me, just a little different. Otherwise, um, yeah, I could sure uh, use a little more companionship and uh, I could use a good hugging partner now that um, Easter is gone. I got nobody to hug and no one to hug to. So anyways, um, thanks for listening. If you do, you guys have a great day. I can't wait to share um, more bits and pieces about this uh, story. So until then...